Brutal heat waves are quickly becoming the hallmark of the summer of 2022. The heat arrived early in southern Asia. In March, India saw a high of 45 degrees Celsius. In Pakistan, temperatures rose to 49.5 C. More than 2,000 people have died already from the extreme heat and wildfires raging in Portugal and Spain alone. And temperature records have been shattered from England to Japan. These events are a shot across our bow, a warning sign, but so often they go unnoticed. Are we not being clear? We're trying to tell you that the entire planet is about to be destroyed. We just keep the bad news light. Right, it helps the medicine go down. By early next week, you can scrap 20 degrees, it could well be 40 degrees. I want us to be happy about the weather and every single... I don't know whether something's happened to meteorologists to make you all a little bit fatalistic. Well, so maybe the destruction of the entire planet isn't supposed to be fun. And, and <laughs> harbingers of doom. Maybe it's supposed to be terrifying. As climate change continues to crank up the temperature, scientists are working to understand the limits of human resilience to heat extremes. Recent research suggests that the extreme heat stress that most people can tolerate is actually much lower than previously thought, meaning that, if true, millions more could be at risk of succumbing to dangerous temperatures decades sooner than expected. Hi, my name's Dr. Ben Miles. On this channel, we look at solutions being developed to build a healthier people and planet. Sometimes that means taking time to better understand the problems that we face. Today, we are looking at the limits of human heat tolerance and what it might mean for our world. The current global rate of warming on Earth is unprecedented. Beginning in June, extreme heat alerts bled across Europe and continued through July. The rising temperatures exacerbated drought and sparked wildfires. The United Kingdom shattered its hottest ever record July 19th when temperatures reached 40.3 degrees centigrade. The heat has fueled fires in France, forcing thousands to evacuate their home. And scientists have long predicted that human-caused climate change will increase the occurrence of heat waves across the planet. Globally, humans' exposure to extreme heat has tripled from 1983 to 2016. The heat is already taking an increased toll on human health. It can cause heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke, which can often be fatal. Dehydration can lead to kidney and heart disease. Extreme heat can even change how we behave, increasing aggression and decreasing our ability to focus. The human body is incredibly effective at managing its internal body temperature. It can shed excess heat and keep the core of the body at an optimal and pretty constant temperature of about 37 degrees centigrade. To do this, the heart pumps faster, speeding up blood flow that carries heat to the skin. Our skin, unlike many animals, can sweat. So as air passes over the skin and the sweat evaporates, it takes some of that captured heat with it. But there's a limit of how much heat human beings can actually endure. In 2010, scientists estimated that the theoretical heat stress limit for human beings was at a wet bulb temperature of 35 degrees centigrade centigrade. To decode what that means, dry bulb temperature is the ambient temperature measured by a thermometer. The wet bulb temperature is the lowest temperature to which air can be cooled by the evaporation of water into the air. It's measured by wrapping a wet wick around the bulb of a thermometer. The measured temperature will now be lower due to the evaporation of water and corresponds to the wet bulb temperature. The difference between these two temperatures, between wet and dry, is the inverse measure of the humidity of the air. In high humidity, evaporation won't be as effective because the air is already filled with water, so the temperatures will be approximately the same. When the humidity is low, however, and evaporation is very effective, the difference in these temperatures will be much greater. As the wet bulb temperature depends on a combination of the dry bulb air temperature and of the local humidity, those variables mean a place could hit a wet bulb temperature in many different ways. The wet bulb temperature would measure in at 35 degrees centigrade, both in conditions that were 100% humidity and 35 degrees centigrade outside, or if the air temperature was 46 degrees and the humidity was 50%, as evaporative cooling would be able to lower that wet bulb temperature. This means that more humid countries or locations will become more unlivable at the same dry bulb temperatures. This is where the phrase, but it's a dry heat, usually used to downplay someone else's complaint, comes from. Hot as hell in here. Yeah, man, but it's a dry heat. 
One of the oldest references to which was cited in print in 1910 to jokingly describe the heat in Southern California. It stated, the thermometer frequently registers 120 degrees Fahrenheit in the shade, but it's a dry heat and one doesn't notice it at all. When thinking about tolerance to heat stress, scientists use wet bulb temperatures because they are a measure of how much cooling through evaporation is possible in a given climate. Given the complexity of the body's cooling system, there isn't really a one size fits all threshold temperature for heat stress for everybody. Different body sizes, the ability to sweat, age, acclimation to heat all play a role. It can strike people that are even young and in the prime of fitness and health. On July 19th, 2016, in South Wales, during an uncharacteristically hot day, 30 degrees centigrade, a 26-year-old Corporal Joshua Hull collapsed 400 metres from the end of an eight-mile course and later died due to heat exhaustion. For the last decade, the accepted value for the limit of human heat endurance has been a wet bulb temperature of 35 degrees centigrade, beyond which human beings can no longer regulate their internal body temperature. However, recent research suggests that that threshold may actually be much lower, even for young and healthy adults. In a study of two dozen subjects ranging in age from 18 to 34, the body's reaction to heat stress was recorded under a variety of climate conditions within an environmental chamber, varying in either temperature or humidity over the course of each trial. Within the chamber, under minor exertion conditions to simulate minimal outdoor activity, the subjects were asked to either walk on a treadmill or slowly pedal on a stationary bike over 1.5 to 2 hours. The subject's core body temperature was monitored using a small temperature measuring device inserted into a pill that the subject swallowed before the trial. In warm and humid conditions, the researchers found that the subjects could not continue above a wet bulb temperature of only 30 to 31 degrees centigrade. In hot and dry conditions, the tolerance limit was even lower, a wet bulb temperature of 25 to 28 degrees centigrade, or approximately 50 degrees centigrade at about 10% humidity. These results are worrying, but definitely suggest that there is more work to be done to understand what humans can endure. It isn't as simple as a wet bulb limit to model for heat loss via the skin through sweating, as the wet bulb value in dry heat is significantly lower, potentially because breathing as method of heat exchange also becomes less effective. In the original 2010 studies, theoretical finding of 35 degrees C may be an absolute upper limit under any base condition. This most recent study, however, shows a more realistic real world scenario and how survivable they may be. This may also explain why some of the most deadly heat waves in the last two decades didn't show particularly high wet bulb temperatures. The 2003 European heat wave, which caused an estimated 30,000 deaths, and the 2010 Russian heat wave, which killed over 55,000 people, never exceeded a wet bulb temperature of 28 degrees C. If the human body's tolerance for heat stress is generally lower than scientists have realized, that could mean millions of people will be at risk from the deadliest heat waves sooner than scientists had predicted. Around the world so far, there have been very few reports of wet bulb temperatures reaching 35 degrees C. But maybe this is lulling us into a false sense of security, making us think we have more time than we actually do. We've based a lot of our climate change targets around limiting the wet bulb number. Wet bulb limits of 35 degrees C could be regularly exceeded in parts of Southern Asia and the Middle East by 2050. But if that limit is actually five degrees lower, as it appears to be, most of the world is actually in the firing line. Not in 2050, but within the next 10 years. One way researchers are looking at to improve our responses to the heat may be to treat heat waves like any other natural disaster, including giving them names and severity rankings. The Extreme Heat Resilience Alliance and International Coalition has started doing just that, and importantly is considering the factors that impact heat stress, such as wet bulb temperature, but also acclimation rather than just dry bulb extreme temperatures. By naming heat waves like hurricanes, officials hope to increase awareness of the dangers of extreme heat. Heat wave rankings could also help tailor interventions to the severity of an event. And so on July 4th, just a few days ago, with temperatures reaching towards 42 degrees C, Seville became the first city in the world to officially name a heat wave, sounding the alarm for heat wave Zoe. As 2022 continues to smash temperature records around the globe, such warnings may come not a moment too soon. If you want to see what other researchers are doing, a team in Iceland are tackling climate change by sucking carbon directly out of the air. You can click on a video I've made previously over here. If you'd like to support my work, please consider leaving a like or subscribing. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.